Hi, my name is Moti Ratmansky. I'm a, a physician holding two specialties, one in pain management and the other in physical medicine and rehabilitation. I'm working at the Levenstein Hospital in the Rehabilitation Center in Ranana, Israel. What I'm going to present you with now is a case study of low back pain, a very common problem in our clinic. Uh, and we're going to take a look at it, obviously, from the myofascial pain angle. So, the, the guy who comes into the clinic, the main complaint is low back pain, radiating to right buttock. The present complaint, this is a 55 years old clerk. He suffers from the pain and also from hypertension and dyslipidemia, which are generally balanced. During the recent six years or so, the pain appears off and on and resolves while resting. A couple of months ago, though, following heavy lifting, uh, a sharpened sensation has raised in the lower back and radiates to his right buttock and the upper thigh. And also, uh, he's uh, saying that it's almost somewhere around seven, which is medium high in the range of uh, pain. So, usually when we take uh, a, a case in this age, we have to eliminate, obviously, red flags. And in this case, we ask him several questions. Do you have cancer or suffered cancer or a history in cancer in your family? Uh, and he denies also taking any sort of drugs or steroid treatment and mentioning no recent weight loss, night sweats or changes in his bowel habits or uh, urinary habits or fever. So we eliminated serious problems and also trauma, obviously, no mentioning of that in, when we took uh, his history. Other questions that we ask about his pain, he said his pain is um, uh, getting worse, worsens during activities and sometimes awakens him from sleep while rolling over in bed. This is a very important question and a hint for the sort of pain we are looking for. The pain is worsens at evening. This is also a hint for myofascial pain, improving with heating, and medications taken so far, which gave him temporal relief, are paracetamol and NSAIDs. And this is also a hint for what sort of pain he might suffer from. The physiotherapy of heating and tense has improved his range of motion, but not the pain. Diclofenac injections also gave him some temporary relief. And he was referred to a pain clinic for epidural injection. Obviously, he has back pain. This pain radiates to his uh, buttocks, so it's, uh, he needs to get an epidural, obviously. And, uh, and the, the physician who sent him to the pain clinic also was wise enough to send him to uh, some sort of imaging. Uh, first of all, uh, EMG and uh, then MRI, which we're going to see soon. The pain diagram as drawn by the patient was uh, something like this, as you can see here on his right buttock, the pain is radiating down his thigh, his right thigh. The EMG findings, as you can see here, a needle EMG in his leg, is uh, showing mild lumbar radiculopathy, and the MRI shows a disc uh, bulging somewhere between L4 and L5, which is the prominent one, and there's also a little disc bulging in L5-S1. So, we have all the reasons to think that this is a case of uh, radicular pain arising from a disc lesion. But is it so? So, what should be our primary working diagnosis? diagnosis? Is it radiating pain? Yes. Is it neuropathic pain? We haven't seen any mentioning of neuropathic symptoms uh, while taking the anamnesis in this case. There are no burning sensation, needling sensation, or other neuropathic signs, which I'm soon going to summarize. Is it somatic pain? Maybe. Is it visceral pain? Maybe also. 
Maybe it, it's coming from the kidneys, for instance. So, what are, or what tissues or organs might give rise to back pain? You can see the back here. So, we know that there are many, many tissues in the back that each of them can give rise to pain and even to pain radiation. Some of them are somatic, some of them are uh, neuropathic. We, uh, the disc itself could give rise to pain from a discogenic pain, what we call discogenic pain, the pain that comes from the disc without direct uh, compression of nerve roots. Peripheral nerves, such as the uh, clunal nerve, for instance, can give rise to back pain. The spinal cord itself or the dura that covers it could give rise to segmental or uh, a larger area of pain in the back. The vertebra, the perios of the vertebra can give rise to pain. The sacroiliac joint, for instance, can give rise to a pain that radiates down, down to the thigh and uh, even the calf area. Facet joints, obviously, and the uh, soft tissues such as muscles, tendons, ligaments, and connective tissue are all able to give rise to pain that radiates somewhere else from this origin of pain. So when we talk about back pain that radiates somewhere, we need to think about all those uh, sorts of tissues. And I haven't mentioned the visceral organs here, which is a totally different story, but should be also uh, being taken into consideration while thinking about back pain. So we try to uh, summarize and try to put some order in these uh, options. So basically, when we're trying to define low back pain, uh, 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 Dr. Bogdok back in 1909 has tried to establish uh, uh, definitions, that uh, standardizations of definitions in between physicians, and he suggested the following. We should either speak about nociceptive or somatic pain that is uh, uh, being uh, uh, derived from tissues such as ligaments, such as tendons, bones, etc., uh, joints, for instance, facets, or sacroiliac joint. This, is a, this pain could be either localized in the area where it is painful, where the patient says, it is painful here, in this spot, doctor, this is where I feel the pain, or the patient sometimes can describe a radiating pain, usually not very, very, very precise area, but more generalized. Uh, this is a somatic referred pain. This is a pain rising from, arising from tissues which are not nerves. When pain follows uh, a nerve pattern or a radical or a root pattern, this is a radicular pain, and this is a, a, a different kind of pain radiating to the uh, limbs. And this is to be uh, distinguished from radiculopathy, which is only uh, a, 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 a description of disturbed connecti con connectivity, conductivity between spinal cord and periphery, which doesn't necessarily has to give rise to pain. For instance, one can have dropped foot without pain, and this is a radiculopathy, but not radicular pain. Okay, this is an example. How can somatic pain being uh, uh, projected from a somatic structure or tissue? This is the case of a facet joint pain, where you can see, in this case, lumbar facets, but it's the same it works the same way for the cervical and thoracic uh, facet joint, where you can see here where the L3-4 facet gives rise to pain, radiates down the thigh and the calf, and also L4-5. So this could be an origin of pain, but not a radicular one, a somatic referred pain in this case. The sacroiliac joint also gives rise to pain that radiates down the leg or the buttocks, and, uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, it could be, uh, the pain could be uh, derived from the periost. These are examples of uh, periost being injected 
with a saline, hypertonic saline, and it gives rise, for instance, at the lower left, you can see where the point that was stimulated was L1, then there was a pain uh, around the iliac crest on the right. Uh, the ligaments, there are many ligaments here in this area of the pelvis, for instance, where you can see here the sacrotuberous ligament, the sacrospinous ligament, the posterior sacroiliac joint ligaments, the iliac lumbar ligaments, all of them and each of them can give rise to pain radiating down the legs. Muscles and the fascia that covers it can give rise to radiating pain, as I mentioned before. Uh, and we're going to soon to see an example uh, of in the, that was mentioned in this case that I present you. And radicular pain that uh, goes and follows the uh, dermatological uh, spread of the root. So what are the main difference, uh, differences between radicular pain and somatic pain? When we're trying to discriminate in between them, when we talk about radicular pain, which is neuropathic pain that uh, uh, comes from the radicals, the roots, it mainly goes to the leg, less to the back. The back. Uh, it's, it it gives rise to sensations of stabbing pain, tingling sensation, and electrical shock. And sometimes we can find neurological signs. If it involves the motor nerves, then we can find muscle weakness or twitch or fasciculations. If it involves the sensory pathways, then we find signs such as allodynia, hyperalgesia, hyperesthesia, or hypoesthesia. And when we do a straight leg raising or a femoral stretch test, sometimes it is positive and it shows uh, that there is a pressure that derives from disc pressing the root. When we speak about somatic pain, all those signs are not to be found. There are no neurological signs. And somatic provocative tests can give rise for pain. The pain is dull, is pressing, sometimes it's pulsing, and sometimes it's hard to precisely localize. Mainly in the back, if we talk about lower back problems, and less radiation to legs. And obviously the SLR, the straight leg, ra the straight leg raising test, is negative. In this case, the guy we... Uh, presented at the beginning of this lecture. He has a symmetrical pelvis, no signs of scoliosis. The pain was on the right side while tilting to the left, so it was while stretching muscles and tissues here. The sensation was normal and there were no other neurological findings in the physical examination. The SLR was normal and Patrick sign which is uh, flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the uh, thigh was negative as well. So our working hypothesis is that we have low probability of radicular pain and high probability of somatic myofascial referred pain and originating, originating from the uh, flank muscles. What could be this muscle in this case? Uh, we find it very often to be the quadratus lumbarum, lumborum. The quadratus lumborum, as you can see here, it's a muscle originating from the uh, transverse process of L1 to L4 usually. Sometimes it has also parts arriving from, deriving from L5. It also originates from the lower rib, the 12th rib, and the, the insertion lies in the uh, iliac crest. You can see it also on the right picture. It lies uh, under the, uh, the uh, rector spinia, the sacrospinalis muscle. These are the trigger points derived from uh, this muscle. They were described very well in Simons and Travel's uh, eminent work of the trigger point manual. And you can see here that it resembles very much the pain that this uh, uh, guy has uh, presented with. Okay, we should always uh, consider the yellow flags, which are the psychosocial causes, and we should be always uh, considered to eliminate them while uh, examining a patient and questioning him. We should uh, ask the patients ab about their beliefs and attitude towards pain. Many times uh, people with low back pain avoid 
uh, sports and avoid movement. Uh, this is a wrong belief and should be uh, considered. We should also consider compensation issues and the hidden emotions that are not being expressed, unresolved family issues or work compensation issues in the case of low back pain. It's very common. Our recommendations for this patient is uh, local heating, stretching, muscle strengthening, drugs, which are working very good in this case, are paracetamol combined with weak opioids such as codeine and tramadol, and minimally invasive therapy, which we found very, very effective, is the intramuscular stimulation. Sometimes it solves problem instantly and amazingly after uh, just needling the involved muscle. To summarize, in the clinical reality, the picture is usually combined and could uh, simultaneously include different tissues. Sometimes a patient presents with a facet problem that involves the muscles around here, around it, and the ligaments around it, and uh, we should treat few tissues together. This is the, uh, the, the, the downside of it, but the uh, upside of it, and the positive and the optimistic side of it, that once you treat one of the tissues, you also affect and influence the other tissues around there. So even if you're not getting the precise diagnosis that it is a ligamental issue or a muscle issue, once you needle it and you release the muscle, you affect the whole area and the whole somatic radiation that comes from this area. A meticulous physical examination is required in order to try to localize as, as much as possible the uh, involved tissues and to direct the treatment toward it. And often, as I said, treating one tissue will gradually affect the other. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.